going to start, kick off the first uh, research presentation. Um, I am co-heading and co-leading the, the Gamma Research Group. Um, it consists of um, two faculty members, um, myself and Dinesh Manocha. We, we co-supervised or independently supervised a, a collection of about 20 graduate students. Um, also a couple undergraduates are also working with us. Um, we also regularly host international visitors from all over the world. We do have a weekly meetings based on the students' availability and their class schedule. For this semester is yet to be announced. Um, our current research uh, area, including uh, simulating large number of people, crowds, um, tracking them, monitoring them, um, traffic simulations and reconstructions of traffic flow directly from traffic sensor data, um, and also looking at uh, traffic analytics. Um, we also focus um, largely um, on multi-sensory interaction and, and their application. This will including sound rendering, not just visual rendering, but also haptic rendering, tactile enable rendering and visualizations. Um, we obviously, we some of these interface techniques that we develop uh, go straight into VR, virtual realities, AR, and so on. Uh, I personally focus um, much of my research on physics-based modeling, simulation, animation. In fact, I'm teaching a course in this area. Um, and this will including simulation, visual simulation of fluid, turbulence, granular materials, as well as simulating deformable body like human tissues, dynamics of these dynamical systems and their applications into medicines, into uh, virtual prototyping um, and, you know, online e-commerce and so on. We also work on intelligent agents and robot algorithms. This will be for multi-agent planning and coordinations. Multi-agent systems include things like um, insects, people, uh, social structures, collective behaviors, um, also robot themselves. Uh, we use a lot of machine learning and data-driven approach. Um, and we also leverage the current architectures on multi-core and many-core systems to exploit the capability of the uh, modern desk hog and, and computing clusters. Um, so, so these are just sort of some of the areas um, that we have work on. Um, I just want to kind of focus a bit more on my own personal research area, which uh, is data-driven, physics-based, modeling, simulation, and animation. So some of the most recent projects that we have been looking at, including um, how to model, how to simulate um, and animate and visualize large uh, city scale, uh, large cityscape. Um, so we look at things regarding how can we simulate how people move, uh, a group of people move in a building uh, under different condition. Uh, we also have been looking at modeling of uh, complex factors like personalities. How do different people react to stress? Um, how do they react to uh, external factors that could including heat, change of weather, traffic, um, other timing condition, and so on, and as well as interaction with other people. We have also been looking at how do people interact with traffic, incoming traffic, um, and how human may react to autonomous vehicle. Uh, there, there is a growing number of, of societal interests in autonomous driving, and most of us are not mentally prepared to, to be driving autonomous car. Uh, and so there are some really interesting uh, social issues to be looked at. Um, and, w and as I already mentioned, we have been looking at um, simulating very large traffic, uh, as well as reconstructing traffic flow directly from sensor data um, so some of the, the project that we are currently looking at is including how will the erratic tra uh, driver behavior might affect the traffic patterns. Um, also, how will different personality manifest in uh, the, the, the driving condition on the road? And we have been also looking at a combination of uh, reconstructed traffic from sensor data and how that can be used to help navigating uh, the largest, you know, traffic systems and maximize the utility of the road system that we currently have. Um, and a lot of these work is uh, integrations, uh, data analytics, uh, real-time inference from sensor data, and as well as, you know, using PDE to simulate these traffic flow, 
as well as using multi-agent systems to model individual behavior. So there's a fairly complex layer of mathematics, statistics, um, machine learning, and uh, uh, computer vision algorithm all sort of integrated at a different layers. And most recently, we have been looking at predicting the traffic and integrating some of the, our work with autonomous driving. Um, so, so to make the autonomous car uh, more you know, smarter. Um, on the continuum of multimodal interaction and display, I mentioned about song rendering. So to, to just kind of give you some idea, what we do is we can actually simulate how audio is automatically generated based on interaction in the virtual world. And this is not just the process of generating sound, but also the process of how the sound wave propagates in space. And that essentially is acoustic. Is how, do you, how do you feel in a room like this? How would a sound travel in the space like this? Uh, different sound effects will give you a different sense about the space. And for us human, this is really, really critical. So we also try to capture some of those effects and be able to render it back. One of the projects um, that we have been looking at is the idea of automatically extracting and acquiring material property that will give us the intrinsic audio signature of all different objects and different material. Um, so what you see here is a complete 100% simulation. Um, all the material that we have in that simulation was automatically extracted from one single audio recording using computer analysis. Same here. This is a demonstration of a virtual xylophone. Everything that you're hearing is automatically generated on the fly by a human player who was just essentially playing this virtual xylophone that was projected onto a multi-touch desktop. And, and we have also integrated the similar kind of technique and developed a similar kind of technique uh, for simulating fluids. You probably have seen a lot of special effects on movies. And many of these special effects are simulated using mathematical modeling of you know, various complex physical dynamical systems, including fluids, smokes, explosions, you, you, know, you name it. This is not. So this is, will be a typical visual effect that you might see uh, in movies or in virtual environment. Audio what we have done is we method. take that visual simulation and we also try to capture how the water droplet interacting As with each other and generate a sound can be that you just heard video. automatically. So we're taking the visual the computing the one step further. Um, um, so currently, we are looking at using machine learning statistical methods to, to do some of the work that you just saw earlier. The, the work that you just saw earlier, we use optimization-based approach. We want to generalize it, and we want to be able to extract um, the material property directly from a single recording or maybe a videos using, you know, for a more complex thing using machine learning technique. So we call this uh, data-driven approach. They are physics-based because it's still generated and governed by uh, the mathematics and the physical laws underneath of these dynamical systems. We are also interested in the broader perspective of audio understanding. Can we automatically identify interesting audio source locations and sounding object and what's going on, what events is going on in the scene? Um, we are also looking at interesting problem like can we transcribe a musical piece directly from a single recording? Um, similar idea, you can imagine that we can extend this to deformable body simulations. So some of the projects that we have been looking at is how do you navigate or help the, the, uh, um, a surgeons uh, navigate a catheter insertion into the human body to help deliver chemo drug, uh, chemotherapy drugs. Um, and most recently, we've been looking at, can we automatically extract tissue property directly from CT scan and be able to determine and help uh, diagnose the cancer stage and the progression of a cancer or any kind of disease. So this is something that was supported by NIH, and we are continuing to work in this area. Um, and again, this is a, a using a combination of optimization technique, machine learning technique, 
to automatically acquire tissue property for each patient. So these are patient-specific uh, methods as well. Um, as I already mentioned, some of the work that I do also focus on visual simulation of all kind of natural phenomena, including fluid, turbulence, sense. Um, many of these videos and projects that I have worked on are available with links on my personal website. Um, so you, you're welcome to check them out. We also have our own YouTube channel as well. Um, so going forward, we are interested in simulating even more complex fluid phenomena that, that will be fluid interacting with solids or different type of fluids um, and various you know, large scale phenomena and also looking at technique with multi-level and hybrid simulation as a methods. Um, we are also integrating simulation with uh, some of our interests in robotics. And for example, we have been looking at learning from simulation for robot manipulation of fluids um, so that we can teach robot how to manipulate container with fluids automatically. Um, and we are also looking at using simulation to generate different kind of driving scenario, different kind of scenario to teach the car how to drive in a few corner cases where it's very difficult to recall accident, but we can use the simulation to generate all these different uh, corner cases to help us uh, simulate accidental scenarios. Um, so we can use those to train the autonomous car. Um, going forward, I, I think I'm running out of time here. So I just want to say that um, we also looking into, we also have work on haptic rendering, and this is multi-touch rendering. Uh, these are just some of the projects that we have. Um, most recently, we have been also looking at the applications of integration of audio tactile interactions. So you can actually create as mu musical instruments and you can play with it. Um, last but not least, it's the idea of cyber manufacturing. And that is, we would like to go shopping online virtually by using a combination of simulation technique um, and also some of these uh, methods I mentioned based on optimization and machine learning methods. So the idea here, just to kind of give you some idea, um, that you may have seen a picture on the leftmost that's um, a photograph from the uh, online catalog. We have developed computer vision and, and graphics technique that can automatically extract the human body from a single view image and also be able to determine what's the fabric and the material associated with that particular piece of garment. And from there, we can show you how it will look on a different body shape. Um, extracted from another images. So the hope here is your shopping experience will be much enhanced in the future using technology like this. Um, so these are just different photographs and you can see on the leftmost, we have uh, essentially a photograph of someone and in the middle, we have a photograph from a, a fashion catalog and we can show you how that skirt uh, from the model in the middle would look on the photographs um, of the person walking down the street. And not only we can show you how it looked like, this is not image pasting. This is actually everything that you see is a full 3D simulation. So we also simulate how the clothes will flow, how it will fit. Um, so that's how we see the future as far as your e-commerce shopping experience. Uh, I, I do want to say that we don't just do interesting research. Many of the work that we develop in our group have also been licensed to company all over the world. Uh, these are just a few examples, um, and I'm going to end right here by giving you the link. Check it out. Uh, we, like I mentioned, we also have a YouTube channel, have a lots and lots of videos. And that's my email address if anyone needs to reach me. Okay. Matthew?